Sometimes it's really obvious if there's a hardware or a software issue. You know, if you see some smoke coming from the back, it's a good indicator. But other times it's not so obvious. If we have an input or an output that isn't functioning, or if it's the software which is stopping that signal from coming through. You know, we do this. What is it, software or hardware? So the first thing we're going to do if we want to troubleshoot this issue is to ask you, where did you run the test? If you ran it on ProSim, Xplain, or on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, that's the wrong answer because this software has all the complicated logic of the 737 inside it. And it might be that this input is being blocked for some reason, which is belonging to the 737. So what we want to do is deactivate all the complicated software logic and operate only on the hardware level. And to do that, we're going to use our program called SC Pascal, the hardware testing tool. The first thing we need to do is head to our website. This is our homepage, and we're going to go to the download section in the top right corner. We're going to click on the SC Pascal icon one time and two times to find the hardware testing tool. Now it's inside a .bra file, which I'm going to find right at the top here, but there's a number of them. I'll click download and it's a standard uh, installation procedure. So open the WinRAR or the other alternative program which you have installed. I'll show you there, double click and run. Allow and English. So there's two separate things. The first is the SC Pascal programming language which we've used to make the scripts for our hardware. And the other thing is the, um, the hardware testing tool, which is what I'm installing now. And it's important to know that you do not need to know programming, how to code a single line of code in order to use the hardware testing tool. It works with mouse clicks and you can test inputs, outputs, displays, analog inputs and servos. So we're now waiting for the program just to install and open. Here we are. This is the interface window. Now that we have SC Pascal open, the next thing we need to do is to communicate with the board. So in order to do that, the only setting I'm going to be interested in is inside options, there's a setting called Listen UDP Port. Now the UDP protocol is one that which will allow our boards to communicate with, with SC Pascal. Now this number here is the same as the host port, which is mentioned multiple times in the SCMB configuration manual. Let's have a look. Here I've opened the manual already to the page where we're going to need it. And in this table you can see the different IP addresses of all the plug and fly modules for the NG and Max. Now I'm interested in the IP address and also in the host port I just mentioned. These are the default values. So in this example what I'm going to do is test the window and probe heat panel module which is a module on the forward overhead. So this is my IP address. 192.168.1.154 and this is my host port. So it should be as easy as going to SC Pascal, typing in the number here, 1154. That's it. Save. The board will appear. We're now communicating and we can start doing tests on SC Pascal. Okay, maybe that doesn't work. Say you put in the number here, it doesn't work. Right, what we can do, what we want to do to test it, because perhaps you've changed the host port is to open your internet browser. Now you go to the internet browser and you're going to type in the IP address of the forward overhead. In this case 154 is the value by default. If you've changed those values I'll link a video in the description for how you can find this page again. For now I'm going to assume that you're on this page. The host port is the number that you're going to find right here. That's the number that needs to go into the SC Pascal window. Uh, this is the IP address of the board, this is the IP address of the computer. Maybe you changed the host port here, and if you did, well, we recommend changing it back because ProSim will, for instance, will, rec will recognize a plug and fly module depending on the host port specifically. So don't change it, leave the default values. And, okay, another thing I want to show you while I'm here is that the daughter board configuration. Here you see we have all of them on. And in the SC Pascal window, we'll see all of them on here. So if I had these looking like this,
I hit refresh boards, now I can't perform the tests. Now this is important because if the input output display that I want to test is on one of the daughter boards, then I won't be able to test it in SC Pascal unless it's activated. So what I want to do is to make sure that all the daughter boards that need to be active for the plug and fly module are active. So in order to find out which ones I need to do, I'm going to head over to the SCMB configuration manual, which is down here, and look for this table inside the uh, daughter board config section. And we'll consult the forward overhead, which is right here, this column. We need to activate outputs 1, input 1, input 2, and the servos daughter board. So I'll head back to the config page and activate those daughter boards. Uh, sometimes it's best to click save board config here as well. Now we should be able to head back here. Yes, here we are. Okay, and now returning to the SC Pascal window, we can now double click on any of these boards and a window will appear just like this one. We'll just test these other ones too so you can see. Let's look at the one in blue, which is the one of the SEMB. That's the motherboard, and the other ones are the daughter boards. Now, here you'll see a number of options. Since our Ethernet motherboard can control inputs, outputs, displays, and analog inputs, then you'll see all of these different options, and some in green here, which these are the inputs that are activated already. And these outputs, we're just going to test them right now. So if I hit all on, you should see. And then we can also activate them one by one. But you'll need to find the pin. Now, as you can see from this example, when I hit all on, the, the on enunciator, the, 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 the first on the left or the fourth to the right, isn't isn't working I'm, I'm hitting it on again so this m this looks like a hardware problem so now I've discovered that this enunciator isn't working and I will now happily get in touch with the system support team to try and find a solution okay so what some other issues that you could be looking at is that are very common that happened to us is that you make sure that you activate all of the daughter boards inside the config page make sure they're all activated. Some of the plug and fly, fly modules have daughter boards and if they're not activated, the inputs and outputs will not react. Another thing you could do is to check the cables. Obviously make sure all the flat ribbon cables are well plugged in so they're making contact. Another issue you could look at is the servos. It sometimes happens that the, the, uh, the gears on the back become blocked. You need to take them out, modify them a tiny bit and they'll work again. Um, another issue you can look at is looking at the PCB, that's the printed circuit board on the back. If you see any burnt trails or anything that looks a little bit strange, take a picture and send it to us, we'll have a look. Last thing I'd like to recommend, since you're doing a hardware test, if you have two of the same module, for example two FS modules, what you can do is swap them around. So if you use the first officer uh, FS in the captain side and see if that fixes the hardware issue you're studying. And obviously you want to be careful with the guarantee. Um, so if you're not comfortable doing any of those things, get in touch before making any modifications. Okay, so hopefully after running all of those tests, you've decided whether it's a hardware or software problem. If it's hardware, it means that you're moving on a C Pascal and nothing's working, in which case we'd encourage you to get in touch with us so that we can try and troubleshoot what is wrong and do a repair or whatever is necessary. If on the other hand it's a software issue, that means it's working absolutely fine on SE Pascal, then we, it could be a number of things. We'd encourage you to go to the manual to make sure you follow all the configuration steps. And it could also be that you found a bug inside the software, in which case you might need to go to the forum and see if anybody else has experienced a similar problem. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Hopefully you've understood how to run a hardware test in SE Pascal. And uh, I'd like to mention as well that all of our plug and fire modules and all of our modules go through a thorough quality testing before they're sent. So hopefully you won't have to see this video for many years, but when you do, um, hopefully you've understood now. The other thing I'd like to mention is that uh, since the integration and development of our new app Orbit XP, uh, SE Pascal has become obsolete because Orbit XP already has this functionality built into it. 
Um, it's the name of the, the functionality is called Albatross, and you click the I icon inside the Orbit XP window to open the hardware testing tool, making this a whole lot simpler. So that's all from me. Thank you very much. And uh, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. We'll add some links to the different manuals in the description. Bye for now.